Once again, it has been an absolute disaster trying to get this video posted. If you're watching this video, I was able to upload it, but I did have to do some heavy editing and self-censoring because the elites or our moral betters don't want you to see the truth that's in this video. Thank you for watching this video. Let's stand in truth together. And please, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Four nights, you can hear helicopters hovering, smoke filled the air. Do not let them fool you. I could smell the burning tires. And for those of you who are soldiers, make them pay. Howdy y'all, I'm Brylan. So Biden sat down to do his first interview since dropping out of the presidential race. In this interview, he gave the most dire warning to America that he has ever given. I'm going to show you what that warning is, and then I'm going to contrast it with reality. And hey, real quick, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. You know when you like this video, it'll get pushed out to more people to help spread the truth. Are you confident that there will be a peaceful transfer of power in January 2025? <laughs> if Trump wins, no, I'm not confident. Oh. I mean, if Trump loses, I'm not confident. Oh, okay. Yep. He means mm -hmm. what he says. We don't take him seriously. He means it. All the stuff about if we lose, there'll be a bloodbath. It's about to have to be a stolen election. Look what they're trying to do now Why? in the local election districts where people count the votes. They're elected, they're putting people in place in states that they're going to count the votes, right? You can't love your country only when you win. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Biden's dire warning is that if Trump wins, then there won't be a peaceful transfer of power. And then he quickly corrects himself because he goes, wait, that's the reality of it. But what I'm supposed to say is if we win, then then there won't be a peaceful transfer of power. And and then goes on to lie about the bloodbath thing. And, and you know, when Trump was talking about economic bloodbath, Biden said it right the first time. If the left doesn't win, there will not be a peaceful transfer of of power. But again, they always like to flip the narrative, tell you that the opposite is true. Right is wrong. Wrong is right. Just like the Bible says will happen. In this video, I'm going to show you multiple clips of the reality of the left. Remember, these are the same people that are screaming democracy must be saved by voting for us, even though they literally installed their candidate into the presidency with another installed VP choice. Remember, to them, democracy isn't about the people. It's about them keeping control. In fact, here's a video of Jamie Raskin. He's the ranking member of the House Oversight and Accountability Committee. Listen to what Jamie Raskin has to say about this upcoming election. Remember, this is a radical leftist. What can be put into the Constitution can slip away from you very quickly. And the greatest example going on right now before our very eyes is Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, which they're just disappearing with a magic wand, as if it doesn't exist, even though it could not be clearer what it's stating. And so, you know, they want to kick it to Congress. So it's going to be up to us on January 6th. 2025 to tell the rampaging Trump mobs that he's disqualified. And then we need bodyguards for everybody in civil war conditions. So what you just heard Jamie Raskin say is that if the left doesn't win, they will try to use the government to overthrow the people's choice. Do you realize it yet? It's not about you and the will of the people. It's about them and keeping power. That's what it will always be be about. And he literally called for civil war conditions if the left doesn't win. That's how deep this goes. They are willing to use the force and the might of the government. If you remember, this is a Democratic state rep from Michigan. Her name is Cynthia Johnson. Listen to what she had to say about conservatives. So this is just a warning to you Trumpers. Real quick, before you listen to what she has to say, it's insane. When she says Trumper, she's not just meaning people who vote for Trump and who like Trump. She's meaning conservatives. She's talking about Christians. It doesn't matter how you feel about Trump. She's talking about anybody that is not a radical leftist. Do not mistake her intent here. 
careful. Walk lightly. We ain't playing with you. Enough of the shenanigans. Enough is enough. And for those of you who are soldiers, you know how to do it. Wow. Do it right. Be in order. Make them pay. I love y'all. This is the reality of the left. They will do everything they can to keep and maintain control. Now the radical left, including Harris and Walls, her vice president pick, which if you want to know more about who Walls truly is, go watch my video I just put out yesterday that's being heavily suppressed. They tried to ban it. It's called The Wrath of God is Here. They don't want you to know this. In fact, if just saying his name, the system's gonna pick it up and probably try to suppress this video because they hate you knowing the truth. But this is one of the most important videos I have probably ever made on my channel. So go check that video out to know the truth about walls. But I want you to watch this clip back when the BM rights were happening in 2020 that destroyed hundreds of millions of dollars worth of property. It destroyed people's livelihoods. And not only that, it left several people lifeless. And it was absolute chaos and destruction all over the nation. And it all stems from the radical left, these radical left politicians calling for the destruction of their own cities. Also testimony from a Minneapolis police union official who says that the governor ordered cops to abandon that third precinct during the spring's rioting. I was in the command post, I heard it. I heard the governor say, give it up. In 932, Chief Arredondo calls the mayor to tell him they've lost control, can no longer maintain order in the city. And then at 1013, Chief Arredondo, who's monitoring the scene from a couple blocks away, gets in the radio to announce defeat. It's a citywide tone right now, and a lot of the third precinct law. In fact, listen to Tim Wall's wife describe how they spent the nights during the protest that destroyed a, a lot of the city. I would say those first days, you know, when there were riots, I could smell the burning tires. And um, that was that was a very real Thing. And I kept the windows open for as long as I could wow. because I felt like that was such a touchstone of what was what was happening. This happened all over the city there. And, you know, it, this is Paul's wife saying that they kept the windows of their house open so that they could smell the burning tires. They could smell the destruction. In fact, listen to this eyewitness testimony. This is a man that was in the city. Hello, everybody. Let me tell you about Governor Tim Walz of Minnesota. He's bad as they come, far super left. He allowed the city of St. Paul and Minneapolis to burn down to the ground on the George Floyd lie. Wow. They destroyed St. Paul, they destroyed my community, they destroyed Minneapolis, many lives were lost, many minority businesses destroyed. It was a coordinated effort how they had everything going. They had Black Lives Matter there, they had anti there. They allowed them to run the city free range. They told the police officers to stand down. Down the street, me and other residents was taking down tag numbers. We handed over to the St. Paul Police Department. Nothing never came about it. And it was a coordinated attack on everybody in those cities. They had everything set up. I had to sit out on my front porch with my ARs and all my guns to protect my family, protect our property, because that governor would not do his and I'm going to tell you, it was like a war zone. Four nights, you could hear helicopters hovering, smoke filled the air, sirens going off daily. Wow. They didn't do a damn thing. And he wants, and she picked him as vice president. Let me tell you another hitch on that. Harris even sponsored the Freedom Fund to get those people, bail them out of jail once they got captured. They working together to destroy America. Do not let them fool you. They do not care about you or our American way of life or our mm. freedom. Thank you. The left absolutely hates this. Somebody that can think for themselves. In fact, if you remember, this is Kamala back when the riots were happening. Listen to what she had to say on Colbert's show. 
I, I know that there are protests still happening in yes. major cities across the United States. I'm just not seeing the reporting on it that I that right, I had that's right. for the first few weeks. Look how gleeful that's, she um, is. But they're not going to stop. They're not going to stop. And that's they're not. This is a movement. I'm telling you, they're not going to stop. And and everyone beware because they're not going to stop. It is going to. They're not going to stop before election day in November, and they're not going to stop after election day. And that should be everyone should take note of that on wow. both levels that this isn't they're not going to let up and they should not and we should not wow this is the vice president of the united states who is now running for president as an installed candidate because the left had to overthrow their democracy in order to install somebody remember we're a constitutional republic but these people will not use that term this is kamala calling for that destruction to not end, that they should continue to do this and continue to burn down buildings and take people's livelihoods away. Let's pray that God would have mercy on America and keep the radical left out of power. I just want to encourage you with this though. You know, God is completely in control. God is sovereign. Nothing will happen outside of what God allows to happen. You know, God will establish leaders in order to bless a nation. But God will also establish leaders in order to punish a nation. And, you know, we should be on our knees praying to God that he would allow our nation to be blessed with leaders that will honor him and speak truth. You know, this is Luke chapter 12. Check out verse 4 here. I tell you, my friends... Do not fear those who kill the body and after that have nothing more that they can do. But I warn you, whom to fear, fear him who after he has killed has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. You know, we should fear God who has the true power over our destinies, who has an eternal power over us. You know, these uh, the, the radicals in our society, those who want to still kill and destroy, those whose God is Satan. Remember, the Bible says that Satan uh, prowls around looking for those who he can devour. In fact, the Bible also says that Satan is the father of lies, who wants to lie, kill, steal, and destroy. These people who are led by Satan, we shouldn't fear them. While they can kill the body, they have no other power over us. It is God who ultimately has eternal power. And we should fear the Lord with a reverence for His almighty glory in the power that He truly holds. In fact, look at what Proverbs 9 uh, verse 10 has to say. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You know, when we fear God, fear His power... Give him reverence and glory and honor, then that is the beginning of wisdom. There is no true wisdom outside of God, outside of God giving us a wisdom that goes beyond common sense, but a wisdom that truly leads us in all truth. And in fact, in James chapter 1, it says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach. And it will be given to him. You know, in these times that we live in, we desperately need more people that are wise, that are being led in wisdom and in truth. And we can find that type of wisdom to navigate through these times that feel so overwhelming and are so evil and so demonic. We can find wisdom to navigate these times through seeking God and asking him to give us that wisdom through the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 6. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. Verse 7 goes on to explain that person who is tossed to and fro by not having faith. Check it out. It says, For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. You know, one thing we can do is also ask God to help us to not be unstable in our ways, to help us to navigate these tumultuous times with peace and love and truth and wisdom and goodness and gladness and joy. 
And we can ask God to give us wisdom, but let's do it in faith. Let's stand on truth and not be double-minded, not be tossed to and fro. And God will give us a wisdom that will triumph over evil. But hey, let me know your thoughts about all this in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, join this community. I would love to hear from you regularly. And please hit that thumbs up button as well. You know, when you like this video, it'll get pushed out to more people and it would really help spread the truth. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.